I have always been an incredibly fortunate person. I am the goddamn living embodiment of the white, privileged, middle-class, educated woman. I live on the lower North Shore. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. This apparently means to a lot of people I have no right to speak up about anything. Tragically, I couldn't give a shit whether you think <laughs> I have a right to speak up about anything or not. I am constitutionally incapable of not speaking up if I feel the need to do so. I also, if I see injustice, if I see something that I think is wrong, I can't shut up about it. I don't know, maybe there's a gene for it. Maybe it was the way I was brought up. Maybe, you know, I've got some sort of crazy speak up about it mental illness. But I don't care. I will continue to speak up about the things that make me feel angry, make me feel passionate, move me, as all the speeches that have gone before me this afternoon have done. I also feel, actually, that as a white, middle-class, privileged, educated woman, I have more of a duty to speak out than perhaps other people do, because I take less risks by doing so. I notice that I'm, I'm also married. I've been married for 40 years, I know. Who could have stuck with me that long? <laughs> Man's amazing. Um, but I realise that that also gives me an enormous sense of safety. I sometimes watch some of the younger, more outspoken feminists who get absolutely slaughtered on social media or in the public eye, and I know that many of them live on their own. And sometimes I think to myself, they shouldn't care about what those other people say about them. But then I remember that at home with me is my husband, who says to me, oh, they're just wankers, don't worry about them. What an idiot, who cares what they say? And also makes me feel physically safer just by being there with me. That also gives me a duty to speak out. Oh yes, I've had my slightly unfortunate moments. Q&A, bit of a theme, <laughs> bit of a theme running through uh, this sort of session, isn't there? And yes, if they ask me, I will go back. Um, <laughs> Many women won't, but I bloody well will. Because I don't answer to anybody. It doesn't matter what I say. The worst thing that'll happen is I'll be wrong or say something stupid. As if that hasn't happened a million times before. And won't happen again, of course it will. But I don't, I really don't feel as vulnerable about all that. And I'm here to tell you a secret. There are a few grey heads in the audience. Getting older makes it safer to say what you think because frankly, they don't care about you anyway. I don't, I don't get sexual trolling. No one says they want to rape me. <laughs> I get you're a bitter, ugly, twisted old hag. <laughs> or as I did the other day, you're ageing badly. My response to that is to go back and say, you mean you're not sexually attracted to me? What a fucking relief that is to know. <laughs> when I was on Q&A, I will tell you the experience, it was funny. When I was on Q&A, I was also on Mia with a um, woman who had been a sex worker and had written a book about it. And, you know, what I hated about it was it was an all-woman panel um, last year uh, to do with the Festival of Dangerous Ideas. Thanks, Anne. And uh, they, they got a bunch of women on, and that, well, I thought that'd be good, except did we get asked a single question about politics or economics or anything like that? No, it was vagina, 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 vagina. <laughs> because apparently that's all we know about. It's <laughs> all we got, a vagina. So it was about sex workers. And I'm seeing there, somebody in the audience gets up and says, you know, I'm going to ask Kaya, her name was, about sex workers. And I relaxed. Foolish thing to do on the Q&A panel. I warn you against it. I relaxed because I thought, oh, good, it's going to her. 
Dear Tony Jones decided to do, as he later admitted, a hospital pass. And he said, yes, I want to hear from Kyra in a minute, but I'm just going to ask Jane Caro about that. I'm thinking, oh, great, sex workers. I know so much as a white, privileged, middle-class woman about sex work. You know, I'm really the right person to ask. And then I got irritated. I thought, I don't like talking about sex workers as if they're a sort of unique, weird group of strange women over here, sort of discreet discreet group. So foolishly, I decided to try and broaden it out a bit. And I said, um, some of you may recall, and I said, look, in the past, in traditional marriages, when there was conjugal rights and women didn't have a right actually to say no to sex in marriage and they weren't entitled to keep their own earnings and very few of them worked outside the home. Well, you know, where's the difference really between trading room and board for giving your sexual and reproductive services to your husband and, you know, uh, actual sex work. And I said, and really, you know, it's been... Ama- I can see the attraction of sex workers because at least when you're a sex worker, the, you know, appointment usually only lasts about an hour. And um, <laughs> once upon a time, it lasted a lifetime, ladies. It lasted a lifetime. And I thought that was a reasonable answer. I thought, well done, Jane. Slid out of that one nicely. <laughs> Totally relaxed, was happy, excellent. And uh, the next morning I woke up, turned on my um, iPad, looked at my Twitter feed, and there are all these people saying, you've just called me a prostitute. (laughs) I'm thinking, I don't even know you. (laughs) On earth would I call you a prostitute? Lo and behold, I find that news.com, that bastion of ethics and (laughs) well-researched journalism, has uh, decided to run the story about my comments on Q&A. It must have been a very slow night. And um, the, the article itself, you could argue, did not misquote me, and they had a clip of what I said, which is not misquoting me. But no one does that anymore. They don't read anything. The headline said, Housewives are prostitutes. <laughs> Now, if you Google my name, I recommend never doing it, but um, if you do, that's what comes up. (laughs) Story after story after story about how I think housewives are prostitutes. Now, I'd just like you to take you back to that moment where I said that I'd been married for 40 years. (laughs) Five of those years I spent at home looking after small children. Now, I don't recommend you do that either, but I did it for my sins, and now Mark Latham will write a column about me. Um, And so, why on earth would I say that women who did what I did for five years were prostitutes? It's clearly talking about the past. I got rung up and interviewed on radio. Ben Fordham rang me up and said, well, you've had an absolute shocker today, haven't you? I said, have I been? What I've done is the smart thing. I've turned off all the television, radio, Twitter feed. I'm not getting the newspapers. I'm reading nothing. Well, he hated that answer. I was meant to be weeping on the end of the phone. Oh, I've heard a terrible people are calling me. Oh. The only thing I'll say is it passed. I mean, okay, it has an on Google. It's still there. Sorry? I know it is. I have. I did check before I came and gave this speech. I thought I better not claim something that isn't true. I know it's fantastic. <laughs> Look, it's a reputation. <laughs> the only thing that really worried me about that was I was about to do a really big, well-paid corporate speaking gig the next weekend, and I did worry if they'd cancel on me. And that is one of the things that can also happen when you speak out, that you lose actual income. And I know, to their credit, the corporate never even mentioned it. It was absolutely fine, they didn't pay attention. And then, of course, I thought, yes, I won't name the company, but they're famous. You've probably had a bit of unfair press in the media yourself. It's probably made me more attractive to you, not less. My problem is that I actually refuse not to say things. I've talked about my abortion. I've talked about, well, just about anything that's ever happened to me. Tragically, if you ask me a question, I will give you an honest answer. (laughs) So all I can say to you is consider carefully what question you'd like to ask me. (laughs) Thank you very much. (laughs) 